Hey, what's up everybody? Isim here bringing you another video. This one going to be my tournament wrap up for DreamHack Denver. So I was just in Denver last weekend and I entered Melee Doubles, Wii U Singles, and Wii U Doubles. DreamHack obviously had plenty more events and I watched some of them, but those are the ones I entered. So let us just get started. So DreamHack actually going to be the last uh, DreamHack this year in the US. I believe there's DreamHack Winter, but it doesn't have Smash 4, so I'm not going. So hopefully they can do this again. But anyway, let us just get into the event. So first, I entered Melee Doubles with my friend Joe. Joey, he's from Chicago. We met, we interact online a lot, and he was like, yo, let's team for Melee Doubles. And I'm like, okay. And um, Joey, you know, before playing with him, like I've played with him before, and he's good, but you know, I think that's about as good as he would call himself. But he actually played amazingly well in doubles, probably some of the best I've ever seen him play. So he plays Ganondorf, and so I was Samus, and I actually have a little bit of experience with this team because when I teamed with Kage at Big House one of the last years, I think the year that I got like top 32 in singles. Uh, so that was, so I actually have experience in this team, which is kind of funny. But so first off, we played against Cooper and Blonde Jesus, and we 2 0 them, and most of these are like Fox and Sheik and Peach and like those are pretty much the characters we fought in doubles in some combination and then we played against Crazy and Wheels and again we 2 0 them and then we lost to Snowy and Mewtwo King, uh, Snowy being a Jigglypuff player, Mewtwo King obviously being Mewtwo King, don't need any explanations there. Uh, so then in Losers we had to play against Wolgi and Bobby Frizz which was a double Fox team and Bobby Frizz is a legend uh, but we were still able to take it 2-1. Again, Joey actually played really really well. He played, went about even with Bobby Frizz which is impressive because Bobby Frizz is a like no, a better player than him. So he just played actually amazingly, amazingly well. He was able to use the half stage because of doubles, right? And his advantage because the Fox couldn't run away or they would run into me. And they were scared of me because one, I'm Esam, and two, you know, they didn't want me to hit him off stage. So Joey was holding his own really, really hardcore uh, in that set. And then next up, we lost to Kitty, MW, and Pat Cake which was a Fox Peach, I think, or I know there was at least a Peach on the team, and that was the one that gave us a lot of trouble, but we did end up losing a 2-0 there, and honestly, that got us top 16, so I was pretty happy with that. Joey was really hyped. He, again, played so, so well. Um, you know, even the games we lost, like, I didn't feel like I carried him at all. Uh, you know, maybe just, like, a little bit because, okay, I'm a little better at the game, right? But it wasn't anything like, you know, he came and going, like, dude, you know you're going to have to carry me hella hard, right? And I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. And then he actually played amazingly well and held his own versus a bunch of people that he played against. You know, he told me, he's like, you know, this was arguably the best that I've ever played, at least in doubles. So that was kind of nice. Uh, so we got top 16 there, and obviously I entered Wii U doubles with MVD, and we actually won. We got first place, and I was very, very happy about that because it's been a while since me and MVD got first at a doubles event, at least not in Florida. So I was very, very pleased with this. And again, I keep forgetting to write down who people play. So round one, we played against Ducky and Flynn, which was 2-0 for us. Uh, and actually at this point I was getting followed around by a photographer, which is pretty cool because I was actually interviewed by the Denver Post, so that was nice, but I'll talk about that more in a little bit. So 2-0 against Ducky and Flynn, 2-0 against 27 Cents and Delta, and I think that was the team that that was like Zelda Day to Day, which was actually really impressive, or it might have been Ducky and Flynn, I'm not sure. One of them was Zelda Day to Day, and it wasn't particularly easy game one, and then MVD went Cloud Game 2 and it was a bit easier because we didn't have to approach the big bodies because he was just getting limits, so they felt the need to approach the cloud, in which case we were able to do what we normally do. Uh, next up we played against Censored and Pink Menace, which was a double Samus team. So game one we played normal, and then game two we actually, me and MVD both go Samus. Uh, so it was quad Samus on Battlefield, and we still end up winning that, even though MVD doesn't have a Samus. He was like, you know, I've watched you play enough, and I'm really good at doubles, so I'll do it. And he did it. He actually played really, really well. Uh, and then, so that advanced us into winter semifinals, where we had to play against Abadongo and Larry Lur. And we lost 2-0, Fox, Bayo. Um, you know, game one, I feel like we were winning, and then I got witch time twice, I think, and we lost. And then also, I... And then game two, I got witch time once, and then I, I got down tilted at like five at the ledge and died from like down tilt fair up B one two three fair on the left side of town and city, and it just killed me like no rage. Good DI, I was really confused, but we ended up losing that 2-0 uh, to drop into losers, where uh, we immediately had to play against Fabian and Jesus, which was a Mario Toon Link team, and they actually, uh, that was game three, so we won game one and three, but it was kind of a scary team. Uh, Jesus knew what he was doing really well, and Fabian, similar to Biddy, was kind of like a nutty Toon Link, so in doubles, that's really, really good, because it pins us down with Bomb on Shield, because we're scared of getting forward smashed at 45 at the ledge and dying, so we're just like, okay, we're here, but because if we're like being careful and shielding, that we're not, you know, doing the teamwork that we're supposed to do, and so that was actually very, very difficult. So we advanced into loser semifinals where we had to play Dakpo and Karna, and we won that 3-2. Uh, it was a combination of Pikachu and Cloud and Pikachu and Diddy Kong versus Luigi Cloud and Luigi Sheik. Uh, all I know is that we were up 2-1 and we had a huge lead. We somehow lost game four, but then game five, 
was pretty, pretty good. I think they won game one, we won game two and three, they won game four, we won game five. But as far as I remember, game five was not particularly close, so that was really good to get a lot of momentum going into losers finals, where we had to play against Javi and Mewtwo King. And Javi, obviously a fantastic doubles player, teams with MK Leo, really, really solid cheap player, especially in doubles. He made a lot of right decisions, but unfortunately Mewtwo King was unable to handle both mine and MVD's pressure, so we were able to get to him a little bit more, you know, throw him off stage, kill him, you know, at least from my perspective, or give him a bunch of damage, make Javi, you know, go all the way off stage to try to help Mewtwo King, in which case MVD would take stage control uh, and potentially throw Javi off and I would get be able to get some damage on edgeguarding on him because one of the games he went cloud. But either way, pretty difficult team, but we did win that 3-0 to advance into Grand Finals. And again, after this point, we had a, a lot of momentum. So Grand Finals was once again against Larry Lair and Abadango, who we lost to at or in winter semis. And actually, me and uh, Mekos beat this team at low tier city, so I was very determined. I'm like, I want to do better with MVD than I did with Mekos, obviously, because MVD is my static partner. And so set one, we 3 0 them, as far as I remember. So again, we had a lot of momentum. I was playing way better in the Bayonetta. Like, I keep, I always want to be aggressive because, you know, MVD is the passive player and I want to, like, give him openings to do things. But against Bayonetta, I cannot be aggressive in doubles specifically, or especially in doubles, uh, because which times can be really harmful because then he can run forward, mess with MVD, and Larry can give me a bunch of damage, or just kill me as Larry Lair is kind of uh, holding MVD at bay. But we did, you know, I played a lot better. I think I got witch timed once in both sets of Grand Finals. So it was a 3 0 and then a 3 1. MVD won a few. I think he won two 2v1s uh, over the course of the set, so I was very, very happy with that. We just played amazingly. We played, our teamwork was amazing. Our I got some lucky double kills where, like, I was going to punish uh, Abadongo for something, and then Larry happened to, like, run in or land on me, and then I got I killed both of them with up smash or forward smash. I did that a few times. Uh, but either way, we actually just played fantastically well, and so we are the DreamHack Denver doubles champions, uh, so I'm very, very happy about that. And now, let us go into singles. And, as I mentioned before, in doubles, I am the worst, and I do not remember who necessarily everyone was. I know there was a day-to-day -day player, and then I do not remember anyone else in the pool until my winner's finals of the pool. So, uh, round one for me, I ended up 2-0-ing Nagenda. Uh, round two for me, I ended up playing against Guinness Ion. I think that was the day-to-day, -day, I'm pretty sure. And that was actually pretty hard. I actually SD'd uh, the very beginning of game one. I had like 20%. I tried to like drift back in there, and I got back here, and I killed myself with it, and then that was elastic game, but then game two wasn't particularly close. Uh, you know, after that, I played against Sultan, and I don't remember who they played, unfortunately. And then I had an incredibly close 2-1 game with Zixby, Zixby, Z-I-X-V-Y, uh, who played Mewtwo. And so game one, I won pretty close, but, you know, I think it was pretty solid on my end. Uh, then game two, he won very, very solid. I'm pretty sure he had like 50% on him last stock, which is pretty good for him. Then game three, he actually killed me first. Then I immediately got, he, he gave me like 15, then I gave him a kill, and then or I got a kill on him. And then after that, I was able to kind of top player him, where I was like, I hit you once, I dealt you 80, even though it was a bunch of different neutral interactions and disadvantage interactions. So I was able to get like a huge lead. Then he got me to about 60, and then I was able to clutch it out Thankfully, super, super close. I was really scared that I was going to lose that because uh, I guess I'm just not comfortable in the Mewtwo matchup. I don't know if it's bad for Pikachu if I just don't know the matchup because uh, we don't really have that many Mewtwo's down here. Like, Leo Hart stopped going to events. You know, I was the Mewtwo player for a while down here, so I don't really have a bunch of experience in that matchup, so I would like that. But at the same time, I do pretty well versus Wadi and Abadongo, although I've never beat Abadongo. So I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't playing all the time. I exactly, I don't know exactly what it was. But it does not matter, for I was victorious and to advance into top 32, where I had to play Jesus, the Mario player that I played in doubles, and because I knew he played Mario, uh, but I went Samus versus him, because obviously I don't go Pikachu versus Mario, and I was able to 3-0 him pretty solid. Game 3 was actually very close, but games 1 and 2 were not. Uh, then after that, that was, it, you know, advanced me into winner's quarterfinals, where I had to play Cosmos. And Cosmos I haven't played since we went to uh, GFC Gamers Fight Cancer in Oklahoma last December, so December of 2016. So I was really, it was really really nice to play him. I really have wanted to play him for a while, especially considering his recent, uh, you know, uprising of like, I'm really good because I can play all the time. You know, I don't live in Texas anymore, blah, 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 blah. And I like the matchup a lot. It's very fun. I money matched him at SmashCon and it was 3-2 last hit and 3-2 last hit in opposite directions. Uh, so that was kind of cool. So I was like, I'm really excited to play him. And then just like the last one, it, this one was 3-2 Although game five was not last hit because I actually got a smashable combo at the very, very end. So, you know, I was able, I think he won game one, but I like had a really solid comeback. I won game two and three, then he won game four, and then I won game five back on Smashville. Uh, you know, I was able to get just a fair play on the Smashville platform, so I had a huge lead at the beginning, similar to the last time I played Samsora. And then, you know, I played kind of passive and I got him a lot of percent, and then he killed me, and then I just immediately killed him with an edge guard. Uh, so I was very, very happy with that to advance into top eight winner side where I eventually had to play Zero the next day. And Zero 
I played so well, but the, it's funny how the set went, because game one, it was really, really close at the beginning, then he got the first stock because I went for a greedy up smash and when he was monkey flipping to the ledge, and then he like back aired me facing forward and killed me at like 110, which that was crazy because I DI'd really bad because I didn't think I would get back aired and die, and I was like, oh, that was a bad risk if I knew I was going to die, but because I assumed he would just like forward air up air me, it's whatever, it's fine. Then he two stocks me, and then the next game on Smashville, I two stock him pretty solid, and then game three, he two stocks me pretty solid, and then game four ended up being an incredibly close close last hit game, both of us at like 130 plus, you know, he avoided a really, in what I thought was a really safe thunder, and then he punished me for it, and I was at like 150, and I was totally caught off guard, so I DI'd really poorly, I think I would've died anyway, but I did end up dropping to him 3-1, very, very close set, uh, you know, I always feel like I played really well in my opinion, I stuck to the plan, you know, once I lose the lead, it's kind of hard to get it back, especially versus zero, because it's so hard to hit him when he's a death percent, but, you know, I, I, I executed the game plan I wanted, and, you know, I still lost because it's zero and he's the best player in the world, and it's okay to lose to the best player in the world when you're struggling for top 10. So I think that's fine. And then in losers, I immediately had to play Salem because Salem lost to Abadango, so he was put in losers bracket fairly early. And this set was a nail biter. So game one, we go to Lilat, I win. Game two, he wins on a Battlefield because I SD at the very beginning. I thought I had a jump or maybe I just messed up, so I tried to jump Thunder off stage and I just SD'd at like 40 and died. He ends up two stalking me that game. Game three, I go to Town and City and I die because I get Witch Timed at like 75% from a greedy up smash, similar to the one I did on Zero, except obviously Witch Time as opposed to Back Air. So he got the lead and either way, that was an incredibly close last hit game. I think I missed an up throw Thunder second stock. I'm not exactly sure. I would have to rewatch it. Uh, and then game four, I won pretty solid. And then game five was a last hit game with like 10 seconds left. And I try to up air him to get him in the air with no double jump and so I can hit his landing. But unfortunately, it trades with back air, and so I lose. But it was crazy, because there was one point where, like, he up smashed the wrong way at the very edge of the right side of Smashville, and I forward smashed him, and it was the spacing that it should have got the sweet spot, and it somehow didn't, and it got the third hitbox of S-Smash, which is still strong, but it's weaker than the sweet spot, and that would have killed him if it was the, the max, like, the biggest sweet spot, and I was really, really upset about that. Uh, but either way, I played, again, similar to Zero, I played my game plan, I executed it, I made one or two mistakes, being the witch time that I could hit by on the SD, and those were really game-changing, and so I I feel like, you know, I can definitely do it. This was so, so close. This was such a good set. You know, I'm going to watch that and, like, cringe a little bit at the forward smash. But either way, it was, it was an amazing set. And in my head, if I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the first and second best player currently in the world, that's fine by me. You know, I'll eventually beat them. I just have to get a little sharper, a little better, a little smarter at the close quarter combat aspects and just not get wish time by Salem. And I will be completely fine. So overall, DreamHack was really nice. We obviously had... Our Hearthstone players there, uh, Racy and Hot Meowth. Hot Meowth actually top aided, Racy getting about 17th, he bubbled. Uh, and then we had Speed Kicks because this was the Tekken North American qualifier pretty much for Worlds. Uh, and he got second, losing to Jimmy Tran, who's like an old school Tekken legend. So we had a second, we had a fifth, we had a first in doubles, and we had a top eight in Hearthstone. So this was actually an amazing event for Panda and just an amazing event in general. I really liked Denver. Uh, the air was pretty thin, obviously, because it was in the mountains and it was the weather was nice because it wasn't too cold, it wasn't too hot hot. You know, I was able to hang out with my panda buddies, which is always something I like. I hung out with Zero, I hung out with Larry, I hung out with Avadongo, MVD of course, you know, Panda David, who's one of our owners. And you know, everyone was just really pleasant here. The crowd was amazing. Like obviously they were supporting their boys, but you know, at the end, like in the top eight ceremony, when we're all like getting our medals and stuff, they're cheering like, please come back, please come back. And it was like, it was really heartwarming just because a lot of scenes, you know, they'll applaud and stuff, but they never really make you feel as welcome as the Denver or at least the general Colorado scene did. So I was very, very happy about that. You know, it was just a pleasant experience overall. I obviously love the Dream Hacks. They're one of my, they're some of my favorite events uh, throughout the whole year, especially because that $10,000 pot is nice. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was a great event and I'm really happy with the way I played and hopefully I can bring this towards to Tuata Handle and Leo Saga where I can hopefully get enough stuff to get into top 10 Hopefully, maybe not, maybe so, we'll figure it out. I mentioned earlier that I got interviewed by the Denver Post, and that's their main, their, their main newspaper, and that was really cool, because I got an email one day uh, saying like, hey, do you want to be interviewed by the Denver Post from uh, David, again, the owner of Panda, or like the, the co-owner, whatever it is. And I was like, yeah, sure. And so they were actually, they talked about esports, they talked about competition, and I'm going to link to that uh, down below if you do want to read it. Uh, I, don't, I think it's pretty cool, and I think you guys should support the mainstream media that's covering us, uh, covering us, because that is how I feel like Smash gets bigger, is to, you know, talk about it to mainstream sources instead of just like about Smash to Smashers and all that type of thing. So I really like that. I think it was really cool. So go, please check that out. Uh, yeah, and that will be about it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, social media, Panda, and partner stuff is down below, and I will see you all next time. Oh, bye bye